Hey guys, um, I'm Evgeny, and let's start from speaking about um, Open Application Platform. And Open Application Platform, what does it mean? It talks about open applications. And we said about composability and openness, but what, what do we mean by that? And how, would, how that works and why it's important and why it's better than uh, the model that we have today with proprietary platforms. Um, we define open applications as applications that decouple ownership from authorship. And it means that if developer creates application, it's not being hosted by, by developer. It's hosted by the other party, by other company or person, uh, hosting provider, essentially. And it allows to decouple the control of running applications uh, with users from the original author. And it allows to break that link, uh, that platform risk, where developer can decide to first create an API and allow other people to build on top of uh, their product, but then cut it off, like it happened to between Facebook and Zynga, between Twitter and Periscope, and so on. Tom gave all these examples. And how it works today, I'm just a developer, like I built, I built an app, I publish it, and then I host it, I cover hosting, I cover all the, um, you know, fees on uh, the hardware and I provide it for users, but I control everything and there's no possibility to break this link of control. So how we do it differently? First, we allow applications to be hosted independently. There's a marketplace of hosting providers that can decide to host or not your application. And if developer um, creates new version of application or just a different application, there is a hosters, like there are hosters who decide to host it or not. If the new version of application cuts some integrations or API off, then hosting providers might say that for their users, it's more valuable to keep the previous version and the previous version will continue to work because it cannot be just modified. It should be the new version new version should be created and new version should be upgraded. And imagine that the developer created a new version, which was not accepted by a majority of uh, hosting providers. So now you have two applications and they both works. Um, the previous version with its users and new version with users who decided to use that. And this is the open marketplace. And this is essentially how uh, blockchain networks works, where you have um, miners, and developers, and they have, to, they have to reach consensus on new um, versions of, of the chain, on new you know, software updates, on new features. Um, miners can just say they, they don't, don't, don't want to run it. But on Fluence, it's more flexible. There might be a different version of application exists at the same time, and they will all work, or just different applications served by different hosting providers. And second thing is, we need to really, really, to allow um, developers to really, really easy compose applications to iterate applications. So imagine that someone created a simple chat application that allows to send messages back and forth um, and published it on a network uh, and it being run by hosting providers. And then another developer comes and says, okay, I developed stories feature and I will take my new feature and package it together with the existing service and we'll call it uh, as a new application and, and we'll ship it to users. And some other developer can come and, and, and develop stickers feature and get another messenger app. So the applications can uh, evolve this way. And what it means in terms of users and benefits for developers. Imagine that like this is the audience, the users of the original chat app and then when this developer opened, published this, this app to the network, opened it for other developers to build on top. And then they created their messenger applications and attracted new users by these new features. But how it works technically? Technically, it's still new feature plus existing service. So the chat, the original chat application received new users and the developer from the original chat application uh, benefited from these new users because more users are using uh, their application right now. 
Uh, and if there is a, a way to monetize these users, then the original developer can can uh, get money out of it. And more like the higher the stack grows, the more users attracted to low level and the more value attracted to low level. And more, moreover, um, so the way how it works technically, um, there are services, like every application consists of the services. Like for example, chat can consist of chat service, the feature of group chat service, like it's another service. And there might be comments built from group chat service. There might be public channels built from chat service. They all might be created by different applications or different developers. And they may be packaged as a different applications again. So if I have just a chat service plus group chat service, I have WhatsApp. If I have all of them together, I get Telegram. If I think of them differently and have comments, public channel or chat, I can have Instagram. And what also cool about this is the low level also is a part of this composing stack. So modules or services or databases, all kinds of tools, that you use to create services also have authors and these tools are reused across the network in many services and then in many apps and then in many apps building on top of apps. So even if you created a very small but very useful thing, it might be used in millions of applications. And if, you, if there is a business model again, then you can benefit from it. So the third thing that we need is business model. And the way how it works on Fluence, um, customers or um, application developers themselves need to pay for hosting to hosting providers. But a part of this hosting uh, goes to authors of all the components and applications and services used to build the, uh, the final application. Uh, and this is coded in a blockchain. So this thing lives on a blockchain. So you cannot just say, oh, I'm not paying to author. The payment always coupled, the payment for hosting always has this author fee, the essentially royalty to authors of the applications and services and components that being used under the hood in, in the um, application. And this all together um, essentially makes the open application platform and the big thing of this platform, the composability that I described. And now we want to talk more about um, Ecomarine, the programming language and the stack that we created uh, to compose applications and services over the network. And I'm, um, I'm giving the word to, to Dmitry, uh, my co-founder. He will talk more about Ecomarine.